In this example problem, we're going to look at influence lines. And we're going to find different influence lines for this simply supported beam with two cantilever overhangs as shown here. Uh, I give us our sign convention for positive moment, positive shear, and, and positive torsion. Uh, we're only going to use moment and shear in this example. We, we can remember our definition for our influence lines. So influence lines represent the variation of the shear, moment, reaction, or deflections at a specific point in a structure due to loading at any point in, on the structure. We need to remember that although influence lines may look like shear and moment diagrams, they are not shear and moment diagrams. So they're, they're separate. So just remember this definition here as we work through the example. The first part of the problem, we're going to find an influence line for the reaction at A in the Y direction by walking the load along the beam and calculating the reaction due to the load at different positions. The first position here is at the left edge where X equals zero feet. So the load is directly at the left edge. We can sum our moment about point B, as I do here, and we can calculate our reaction to be 1.2 kips. Note that I'm using a unit load here of 1.0. We'll uh, see why we, we do this uh, later in the example. Our next point is with the load positioned over the reaction uh, at a position x equals 4 feet, so uh, 4 feet from the left edge. Again, we can sum our moment about point B, and we'll find our reaction at A equal to 1.0. We can keep moving the load along, so here at 8 feet from the left edge, we can find, some, by summing our moments again about point B, we can find our reaction to be 0.8 kips. We can continue to do this and move the load along and calculate our reaction at A, and we'll get the diagram shown here. So this diagram is an influence line for the reaction at A for our, our unit load of 1.0. Note that influence lines for statically determinate structures are always going to be composed of straight line segments. So you can see we're connecting all of our adjacent points with a straight line. And this will be valid for, uh, again, for statically determinate structures. The next way that we can assemble our, and create our influence line for our reaction at A is we can solve for the reaction in terms of a variable load position X. So here, we're going to position our load a distance X away from the left edge. And if we sum our moment about point B, again, we'll have our force times our distance, so one, our unit load 1 kip or 1.0 times 24 minus x, and then uh, we have our a times the distance between a and b 20 feet. So we can solve for our reaction a in terms of x, and we'll get this equation here. So you can see we'll get the same results that we did in, in part a of this problem. If we solve for x a, uh, the reaction at a in the y direction, with our load at x equals 0, x equals 4 feet, and x equals 8 feet, we'll get the same uh, reaction. We can also find our influence lines for shear and moment. So in part C here, we're going to find the influence lines for shear and moment at point C, which is going to be a distance of 10 feet from the left edge. So we have our, our free body diagram here with our load positioned at x and we know from before that our reaction at y is going to be equal to 1.2 minus 0 0.05 times x. So we can make a cut at c and look at the free body, free body diagram of the left portion of the beam and we'll have a positive sign convention for our shear at c and our moment at c. So summing forces in the y direction, we can calculate our shear at C, uh, as shown by this equation here. And summing our moment at point C, we can solve for our, our moment at, at C, or, or summing our moments about point C, we can calculate our moment at C in terms of x with this equation here. If we move the load to the right of point C, it's no longer going to be in our free body diagram here. So we can uh, solve again by summing our forces in the y and summing moments about c 
and calculate a new equation for v sub c and m sub c as shown here. We can plot the uh, series of equations that we found on the previous slide to find our influence lines for shear and moment uh, at point C, a distance of 10 feet from the left. So you can see our, our influence line for our shear at C and our influence line for our moment at C. So from this, we can easily see uh, the position where the load would cause maximum shear and maximum positive moment and maximum negative moment. So if we position the load over point C, we can see we're going to have the maximum shear here, and we'll also have the maximum positive moment. If we wanted to get the maximum negative moment at position C, then we would need to move the load here to the left edge. So if we put the unit load here at the left edge, we would cause a moment of negative 2.8 kip feet at position C. So we're going to see in the next portion of, of this example, but we can use the influence lines to obtain the magnitude of the reaction shear or moment under a particular load or also from a, a uniform load. So we'll see how to do that uh, on the next couple slides. And uh, right, we do that by taking our, our point load times the magnitude of the influence load at that point. So this is why we use a unit load here is then we can just take the magnitude here times whatever actual load we have to find the moment at C if the load is applied there. So again, we'll see that as we continue to work through this example. In the next part of this example, we want to determine the magnitude of the maximum shear, the maximum positive moment, and the maximum negative moment if we have a 30 kip load and if that load can be placed anywhere along the length of the beam. So as we saw in the previous slide, if we want maximum shear, we need to place the load at the, the location at, at our point C. So placing the load here will cause a, a maximum shear and we can find the magnitude of that shear just by taking 0.7, the magnitude of the shear from our influence line using a, a unit load of 1.0 times the actual load 30 kips. So if we place this 30 kip load at point C, we'll get a shear of 21 kips. We can do the same thing to find our maximum positive moment at C. So remember, we place the point load at C to get a maximum positive moment. And to find the magnitude of that moment, we just take this 4.2 times 30 kips, and that'll give us 126 kip feet. And just make sure that you know what your units are here. So I was using feet and kips in my, uh, my diagram. So for my moment, I have units of kip feet. Next, we can uh, find our maximum negative moment at point C. So we saw from our influence line that we'll get our maximum negative moment if we apply the point load at the left edge of our beam. So applying the point load at this left edge, we'll have a, a, mom, a negative moment equal to negative 2.8 times 30 kips, which will give us negative 84 kip feet. So we can use this negative moment and the positive moment from the previous slide to uh, design our beam at, sec at our uh, section C. Uh, next, we can use our influence lines to determine if we have uplift anywhere at our supports. Negative reactions mean that we have uplift and typically in, in bridges this can be a concern because typically we don't restrain against uplift. Uh, so here if we had placed a load on the right edge of the beam, so this is the again the influence line for our reaction at A in the y direction. So if we place a load at the right edge of the beam we'll have uh, a reaction at uh, AY equal to negative 0.2 times 30 kips, which will be negative 6 kips. So you can see here we have a negative reaction at AY, so we can see that applying the load here at the right edge would, would give us uplift of our, uh, of, of our support at A. So we would just need to design, that when, uh, design for that and account for that when designing our uh, support. 
In the final part of this problem, we're going to see here how we can determine the magnitude of a, of a moment or other properties from our influence lines uh, at, at a specific point due to our uniform load. So in this specific example, we're going to see the uh, magnitude of our, of our moment at point C if we have a uniform load between the left edge and point C. So what we're going to do is, uh, so the, the magnitude of the force effect is going to be the uniform load times the area of the influence line within the range where the uniform load is applied. So we take, we have our area here, it's just two triangles, so we can find the area as shown here, one half base times height, one half base times height, and we take that area times our influence, or sorry, times the magnitude of our distributed load three kips per foot and we can find that we would have a moment uh, a moment at c equal to 21 kip feet if we had a distributed load as shown here uh, note that we do need to keep our signs so we have a negative 2.8 carry through that negative and we'll get the right sign then uh, with our sign convention um, for the uh, for the moment here so i, I also want to mention that um, what I showed here is just one way for constructing influence lines and using them. We can also use the, the Mueller-Breslau principle to develop influence lines. Uh, we're going to cover that in a separate example problem. So that concludes this example.